All right, Glenn Clark here at the Green Turtle Classic, and two wins this weekend for this man. He is the head coach for Nazareth, Rob Randall, and coach. Exactly how you drew it up today, right? Exactly yeah, the way you yeah, imagined that, you guys would win. That's pretty much how we've drawn up every game so far this season <laughs> for us. Uh, racing out to the 9-0 lead at the half, then holding on for the 11-9 win over Cabrini. I guess let's start with what went right in the first half that you got out to the big lead, what went wrong in the second half that you had to hold on late. Um, you know, I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. I think we were... Uh, we were doing a good job with our shot selection and some shots were falling early and we gained some momentum and as you guys know you see enough lacrosse it, it is a, a game of spurts and it's a game of momentum and we had that early mo momentum uh, early and um, you know fortunately we were able to hang on. I don't know if there's an MVP award given out for this event but if there was I would imagine Drew Simino would have quite the statement in that uh, category. Yeah well you know as I said yesterday um, he in my eyes is a first team All-American and uh, just an outstanding athlete, uh, great kid, and, and he's a ground ball machine. Um, we can depend on him in, in any situation. He was kind of hobbling around today on a bad ankle, and, and uh, he found a way to get it done, and, and that's huge, especially uh, later in the game when we're looking for possessions when you know, they were gaining some momentum. Uh, the goal right before the end of the third quarter where McDermott just flings it at the length of the field, and there's Luke Wooters waiting for it. He turns around. How key, again, it's amazing to think you could be outscored 6-1 to one in one quarter, but the one could end up being bigger than the six, but that's the way it felt going into the fourth. Yeah, you know, I mean, that was a, uh, it, was a it was lucky that we got that goal. It was a great shot by Luke and a, and a great ride. I thought defensively we did a, a pretty good job for most of the game. There was some let-ups there and some six-on-six six situations, but we really emphasized to the kids to play great defense and that includes the riding game and I thought we did a good job in the riding game and I think we got that goal off of a ride yep. and uh, fortunately we were able to put that away. For the weekend, two victories, the experience here, how much will this help your team moving forward? Well, you know, I mean, uh, it's a great event. As I said yesterday, we, we love being a part of it. Uh, we beat two really good teams, uh, fortunate to beat two really good teams. And, uh, you know, we got we to gotta kind of regroup and get ready for our league play starting on Wednesday. Well, Coach Rob Randall, we appreciate it. Congratulations on a great weekend and best of luck moving forward. Thank you, Glenn. I'm Glenn Clark for SFMSports.net. Glenn Clark back here at the Green Total Mustang Classic. Cabrini Falls today 11-9 to in what ended up being a thriller. Coach Steve Colford joins us now. And, Coach, um, I, I, I don't know. This is one of the, the stranger, wilder games I've seen, not just at this event, but really in, in years of watching lacrosse. I guess we'll start with what went wrong that you guys are down 9 nothing at the half and then went – what went right that you guys were back in it at the end? I mean, I think the difference is just energy. You know, I mean, where we came out and we just didn't play with any energy. You know, I mean, and, um, you know, obviously never having played in this event and never played in back-to-back -back games and, you know, our preparation is something that we really try to pride ourselves on. And so I think maybe our kids get used to that. And yeah. so this is a different animal. Um, and so they kind of show up kind of like not expecting, you're not sure what to expect. And, you know, that was clear. You know, Nazareth was, was highly prepared and ready to go and play with a lot of energy. Um, um, and we didn't. Um, and then, you know, at, at halftime, you're just saying, listen, you got to play with some pride and just go out there and compete. And that's what that's what changed. You made a change in goal in the game. And Jake Reynolds mm -hmm. really was impressive mm -hmm. after coming in. What, how did you, I guess how did the decision come about to go to Jake? And then how impressed with you by, by, by what you saw from him? You know, unfortunately, sometimes the goalie suffers in terms of the, because he sits there on that island. So, yeah, Tyler probably would like a couple of those shots back or starter. But, you know, you make it you're looking for a spark you know, to get you started. Um, and so it's easier to isolate on that position than to sub your whole attack, your whole yeah. midfield, your day. And, and so that's kind of what the thinking was there. Try to get a spark, try to get a big save. Jake is one of those high energy kids in practice in our program that kids feed off. Um, and so that was really the thinking. Um, and so, you know, I think for the most part it worked. Um, there was a couple where, you know, but, um, you know, we were just trying to grab at anything at that point. So. I think as the second half went on, everything seemed to be going your way other than two departments, face-offs, yeah. clears, yeah. maybe the two things that if you could have just done a little bit better yeah. in that second half, you might have been able to pull off this yeah. remarkable Yeah, I mean, uh, that's it. I mean, you look at our stat sheet, they were plus 19 on ground balls, which is, and 13 of them came in the face-off circle, and then failed clears, you know, and then we just talked about in the locker room, you know, we gave them ex eight extra possessions on our failed clears. We know they're a uh, pressure ride, they condense the field, you can't let your defenseman run up into there because that's where 
where they get swallowed up. And again, when you're fatigued and players playing, like I mean, this is our fourth game in seven days, and I'm never going to make excuses, but it's just hard for them sometimes to, to mentally process the things that you're asking them to do when the body is just that fatigued. And, and um, you know, so we learned some valuable lessons. It's still a very long season. You know, we got a lot of lacrosse to play. Can we get better? Sure. I mean, we would like to go home 2-0. Absolutely. Uh, we go home one on one um, and we learn from it. I mean, that's um, that, that's what this experience is about and why we schedule the teams that we do. And then just to wrap up your overall thoughts on the event, as you mentioned, first year being a part of it and uh, ended up after our debacle on Friday, ended up having some great weather and a really nice event. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I would have loved the event if we were two and oh, I mean, right. I, I kind of <laughs> like it at one and one. Um, I probably would never be back if we were oh and two. So, uh, no, uh, it's a wonderful event. Obviously, top notch facility. Uh, everyone here is wonderful the coverage it's just a great experience for our kids uh, we want to be a premier program in the country and to do that you have to compete against other premier programs and obviously Stevenson and the other teams that are here are um, in that group um, and so we only benefit from this you know w wins and losses aside our program gets better and takes the next step and really shows that it belongs in that grouping of teams that, that want to compete at the highest level. So. Well, well, Steve Culver, we certainly appreciate having you guys out here. Thanks for taking the time for us post game today and best of luck the rest right, of the way. I appreciate it. Thanks. This is Glenn Clark from the Green Turtle Mustang Classic for SFMSports.net.